So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what are we here to chat about today? Uh, that's my one joke for the presentation. <laughs> All right. Um, we're here to chat about chatbots. Uh, we're here to chat about chatbots in Drupal. Uh, my name's Everett Zufelt. I'm Associate Director of Technology at MyPlanet. Uh, I work with a number of our customers and our d development and implementation teams just to keep everything running smoothly. Um, I'm Rafael Silva. I'm a senior Drupal developer at MyPlanet and I develop as, as well uh, websites and many other systems for the company. And uh, we want to just give you a little bit of an introduction. What is this presentation uh, about today and what it's not about? This is not a conversation about artificial intelligence. Uh, we, we actually want to get, in, at the end, we want to talk about some of the experiments we want to do next. And integrating AI with the chatbot work that we've done so far definitely is what we want to look at. But this is not a conversation about AI. This is a conversation about everything you need to do with a chatbot before you start to look at integrating artificial intelligence. So what we are talking about today, we're ta talking about chatbots, what comprises a chatbot, how we can integrate chatbots with Drupal, how we can build chatbots based on Drupal. Um, my planet, really quickly about us. Uh, we're a design and development organization. We're headquartered in Toronto. We have offices in Toronto, Vancouver, some offices in Europe, and we've got a small sales office in Ch Chicago. The, I'd say probably about half of the work we do at the moment is uh, Drupal-based design and delivery. Uh, the other half of the work we do is around a couple of different technologies areas. We do some native work. We've done some Android Wear work. That was kind of interesting. Uh, we do JavaScript application development, so whether it's Angular, React, or, or other types of frameworks on the front end. And uh, we do some Java work as well because everybody loves Java. Uh, agenda for today, what are we going to talk about? Uh, we're going to talk about an overview of chatbots. We're going to talk about some use cases in the wild where we've seen chatbots actually in use on live production sites. We're going to talk about uh, chatbots in Drupal. There's a couple of modules to just be aware of that exist along with the, the experimental one that we're working on at the moment and that we're going to be demonstrating. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, our experimental module, how it went together and how it works. We're going to show a couple of demos. Uh, fingers crossed with the Wi-Fi, one with Facebook Messenger, one with Slack. And, and then we're going to talk to you about where we want to go next with our experimentation, maybe some experimentation that you can do along with us, because this module is up on uh, Drupal.org. Uh, it's Project Chatbot. That, that namespace was available, so we grabbed it. Uh, and then just talking about some of the interesting things we'd like to do through the rest of the year to build up our understanding of, of how we can marry a, a rich content management system like Drupal together with uh, the idea that's, you know, really in the last, chatbots have been around forever, but really in the last probably year or so has really started to, started to pick up speed. There's been acquisitions in the industry, uh, so it's definitely a place that's, that's ripe for innovation. Uh, I'll start off by giving a little, little chat about chatbots and kind of the, an overview, and then Raphael will pick it up from there. Um, so I think we're all familiar. We all have smartphones. Most smartphones today have, sm have a chatbot integrated. We've got Siri here, so I can ask, let's see, that she's going to get, she's not going to understand me right here. What's the weather in Baltimore? It's currently cloudy at 15 degrees. Cloudy. Oh. Cloudy skies starting in the afternoon. So, oh, she's chatty. <laughs> so, currently cloudy, 15 degrees, and it's going to rain for the rest of the day. Really unpleasant week here in Baltimore this week. So, you know, we're, we're familiar with this. We interact with chatbots. We might not think about it as a chatbot, but whether it's Alexa, Google Home, Siri, or many, many other devices, we all interact with these tools, uh, or at least most of us do on a daily basis. I know I use Siri every day. So, you know, we're, I think we're all familiar with what it is. There's a system somewhere, there's some content, analytics, some rich data, there's uh, us sending a request to that system. And I think most of the, the sizzle, is, I think that for a lot of people is in the natural language processing. You know, we can ask Siri 20 different ways for the weather in Baltimore. Somehow she's able to understand that I'm looking for weather and I'm looking for it in Baltimore. And, and as Raphael starts to talk about kind of the components of what goes into a chatbot, he's going to explain some things around entities and intents. So really, that's what a chatbot is. Um, it's really just a way for a human to interact with a computer. 
whether or not it's doing it through a more of a directed uh, choose your own adventure, you know, hey Everett, would you like to know the weather in drop down list of cities and I select the one I'm interested in, or if it's using natural language processing to infer from my speech what it is or my writing what it is I'm looking to achieve. Um, the experiment really that we are looking to do around chatbots or the goal that we set out for ourselves was, you know, number one, we really just wanted to understand structurally what is a chatbot. What are they made of? How does the messaging back and forth work? We didn't want to reinvent the wheel, and there's many frameworks out there to look at. So step one, we just wanted to understand commonly what are the components that go into a chatbot. Secondly, and, and really quite inspired by the Facebook Messenger work that was released by the, the former White House, um, we wanted to take a look at how can we build on top of that. We thought it was a really interesting architecture that they put together, but really tightly coupled on, on, in a couple of places. First of all, the, chat, the Facebook Messenger module really tightly, unsurprisingly, coupled to Facebook. So there wasn't an ability to swap out that Facebook component with other ch chat clients. On the back end, the Facebook Messenger com uh, module really tightly coupled into a workflow management that requires a developer to write code. So in order to program that Facebook Messenger bot, there needs to be some coding that gets done. So what we wanted to do, second part of the experiment, first part was just understand chatbots better. And the second part, can we use the plugin system in Drupal, along with kind of starting from the, the Facebook module, to extend and allow for us to have a framework where on the front end, you can build a client framework so the two that Raphael is going to demonstrate are Facebook and Slack. And on the back end to have a, a plug-in or a pluggable approach to how we can actually create that workflow. And how we can take the workflow out of the hands of just being a development tool and into the hands of a content creator. Or, a stel or I guess in the case of a chatbot, the person who's actually writing the story that the chatbot's telling to the consumer who's interacting with it. So that's what we were looking to do. Now, Raphael, I think you're going to talk a little bit about uh, use cases for chatbots. Yeah. Um, so uh, I would like to talk about uh, some common use cases for chatbots. Um, so uh, one of the first things that you can think of when talking about chatbots is asking, just like Everett did, asking for the weather. So uh, you talk to Siri, or you can use any other kind of uh, approach to talk to a chatbot, and he will, uh, the, the chatbot will know how to treat it and give it back for you this information. Uh, so for example, this high poncho uh, Facebook chat, uh, or Siri, or any kind of other uh, chatbot that can go to a, to a weather site and grab the information, gives you back that information based on your query. Uh, the same thing goes for survey. You can have a, a, a chatbot where uh, the chatbot, chatbot asks you, uh, would you like to uh, answer some survey? And you, uh, you know, answer saying yes or no, and then uh, it gives you the, the the questions and you give back the, the answers. That's this survey bot as an example. And uh, a to-do list, you can create a to-do list uh, just sending uh, your to-do items or even asking to mark, uh, check out the, the, the item or anyway, uh, remove an, an item for the chatbot as well. There is a to-do bot for that. News, you, you can Retrieve news from websites. CNN has a chatbot just that do, that does ju just that. Um, you you can even buy buy stuff from a chatbot like the the Nordstrom, uh, and uh, and you always have the chance to just chat with a chatbot uh, that does nothing. It's just chat with you back. So because you're very lonely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, these are some use cases for, for chatbots. You can think in, a, in many, many, many orders uh, use cases. But um, in the end of the day, uh, the chatbot will uh, automate some process that you have uh, so you don't have to have a, a person uh, on the other side to do this re repetitive task or boring task. You can automate that. 
and uh, uh, scale your business. So, next on, chatbots and Drupal. What do we have already uh, about chatbots in the Drupal community and as specific, specifically for modules, what modules do we have uh, for chatbots? Well, uh, on Drupal, uh, Drupal.org, you can find uh, three, uh, three modules. Uh, one another is the one we built, so it, you can al already find it there but uh, I didn't list it here. Uh, so the, the first one is the bot module. It's a IRC chatbot model. It, uh, it, I guess it's just for a Drupal 7 version. But um, yeah, you can install it and use it for your, uh, uh, for your IRC channel to uh, answer you back. The second one is um, AL, AIML parser. It's not really a, a, a chatbot per se. It's it's just an integration with uh, a tool, but uh, and it uses a markup language for uh, talking back to this uh, other chatbot. So, but yeah, uh, it, you can consider that one. And uh, the last one is the Facebook Messenger bot. It's um, hosted uh, right now. It's hosted on GitHub, and uh, it's the the one we forked from. We created uh, our own module uh, deriving from this one. And uh, it's a good, a, a very, very good module. It's very structured. But uh, as Everett said in the beginning, it's also tightly coupled to only Facebook. So we, we tried another uh, different approach so we can use uh, a module that uh, works not only with Facebook, but with Slack or your Houston uh, chatbot or your chat uh, mechanism, your application. So, uh, how is this module built? Uh, it's a, only Drupal 8, so we we didn't backport it for uh, Drupal 7. Um, so you will have because uh, uh, the main reason be uh, of that is because we are lever leveraging on the um, plugin API, so it, it doesn't exist in Drupal 7, and uh, it, of course that it doesn't matter. Uh, it it make, doesn't make any sense to uh, backport it. Um, as I said, it's forked from Facebook Messenger bottle. Uh, you can use the the plugin API to extend it. And, uh, and uh, when we delivered that, we delivered that with two integrations right now, Facebook and Slack. Uh, and, uh, and you can, of course, extend it. What are the components of a chatbot? Uh, so for this module, uh, you probably uh, will have seen these names differently in, in, depending on the context you're familiar with. but. Um, uh, these are the names we choose to use. So uh, we are using a uh, message type. What kind of things a message type? So when you interact with a chatbot, you're just not, uh, you're probably sending them just text most of the time, but it will send you back information in a more rich uh, uh, format. So you, you might have images, you might have um, uh, videos, links, uh, buttons that you can interact with, and uh, even uh, it can have it, it, it can have some decision uh, behind, uh, but you can program under it to say, okay, if that word come up, I w want to lead this uh, this conversation to this way, or if this word come up, I uh, uh, I want to go to the other uh, way. So that's a, another type. So. These are the uh, image message types. It's extensible, so you can uh, create your own. Oh, uh, my, my chat mechanism has a, a different way. We don't uh, like images, but we like, I don't know, some kind of obscure way to uh, send information to the user. Uh, I want to send them, say, uh, I don't know, um, a calendar information, I ICS, whatever. You can create uh, a... Um, your message type. Uh, 
Next one is the message. Of course, the, this is the way that the, these messages are delivered to the user. So when the user interacts with the chatbot, uh, the chatbot gives back messages from those types. Uh, and then we have steps that, are, that can be just a simple message that is delivered back to the user or a compound of messages, a, a group of messages that doesn't matter really the type of the message, but it gathers to get a lot of messages and send back to the user. You're gonna see that uh, on the demos. It, if it's not making sense now, I hopefully believe it will make sense then. And least but not last, or oh, last but not least, there is uh, workflows. Workflows are the way that you um, organize these steps. So uh, a workflow is a, a compound, a group of steps that make sense that the, the chatbot will follow and deliver back for you when you are interacting with, with it. So, as I said, you, we have message types, can be text, image, video, buttons, this, this kind of, I'm calling decisions that uh, are based on the text the user sent to the, to the chatbot. It will interact back. Um, and here's kind of how uh, a step will behave. You have a decision, for instance, with a lot of messages that can be just text, image, videos, anyway. And it, uh, when you have a decision uh, type or a button type, that are the two main uh, ways to go to another step that's not the following one, you uh, can interact with that and go to another uh, step, a different step. And so you can continue on and on until uh, your workflow is done. Uh, and as I said, there's a, uh, the workflow uh, with a lot of um, steps. So we are ready to a quick demo. Uh, I want to, to demo the, the Drupal user interface that we created to manage this uh, chatbot. Let's see if I can make it. Go there. Oh, let me try another approach. Uh, that me that didn't work. I guess I can move that back. Okay. So um, here uh, uh, we have a Drupal website, Drupal 8, running uh, this chatbot. And, uh, and as you can see, uh, I can't see, but you can see, uh, we have uh, the chatbot. Let me see if I can just make my screen go together so I can see what you can see. <coughs> and I'm kind of lost here. I guess now it's much better. Okay, so we can see the same thing. So uh, as you can see here, uh, I guess it's a little bit small, but we'll try to make it a little bigger. So we have uh, set up this module with uh, uh, a lot of mechanisms so you can interact with. So uh, you have the workflow list, the step list, message list, chatbot list, because you have more than one chatbot, and you have message types. You're, and everything is configur configurable, so uh, I'm not going to the configuration uh, part, but I'm showing you some kind of uh, message types that we, are have, we already have set up. So you can see, um, there is a button, a decision message, an image, and a, a text. Each item of that is an entity, a Drupal entity, so you can add fields, remove, remove fields, and so on and so forth. Um, let me go back here uh, and go to field, manage fields for the buttons, for instance. So uh, this module uh, has a dependence that is field collection. 
so you can have uh, many buttons, as many buttons as you want, as many messages as you want, and so on and so forth. Uh, I would not be able to access this from here. I have to go there. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me get, get the image. Okay, you have an image field here, just like any regular entity in Drupal, where you can set up the fields the way you the way you want. And um, this is these are the uh, message type messages message types, and then you go to chatbot list. So as I said, we developed two plugins. And uh, you can create as many workflows or as many uh, chatbots you want. Uh, and just as simple as just clicking an add button and filling some fields. The name of the chatbot, uh, the plugin type, this one you of course have to develop. And the endpoint, the webhook endpoint where the uh, chat mechanism will interact with your chatbot uh, and some configuration. This is a, a, a point where we are improving that. Uh, it's not uh, quite the, the, the perfect way yet, but we are working. And uh, you can assign the workflow. Um, I'm gonna get the one that is already set up. Uh, I guess can be the Facebook one. So you have a bunch of uh, variables uh, those variables, uh, as I said, it's uh, leading us to an uh, improvement. Uh, we are going to make this fillable so you don't have to use this syntax. But as for now, it's just the way it is. Edit, uh, it's set up to a um, workflow here. And um, if we go to the workflow, you see, uh, we have two workflows. Uh, these two workflows can be set to any chatbot, or you can create as many workflows as you want for as many chatbots you want. Uh, so for the button workflow, we have a bunch of steps here, as you can see. Uh, four steps are set. Uh, depending on the way you set these, these steps, they can have as many messages within these steps. Uh, and when we are going to demo uh, the actual bot, you will see uh, how it works. Um, and let me go back here, uh, the message list. So these are the messages we set uh, for this demo. So there are a lot of messages here. And uh, some of them are just pure text, some of decisions, some are buttons and some are images, okay? Uh, so what does that mean for you guys? Uh, it means you, once you, uh, if you were planning to use just uh, these two chatbots, uh, the two chat mechanisms, Facebook Messenger and Slack, you don't have to do anything else to program or to in implement a chatbot using Drupal right now. You can just go ahead, grab the module, install it, configure, and go play with it. Uh, if you are planning to use a different chat mechanism, you, you'll probably extend this module, and I, I, I will show you later on how to do that. So coming back to the presentation. Uh, so, what are you going to do to extend the uh, chatbot module? Uh, you will have to implement a plugin API. Well, we created the plugin in API and then you just uh, implement it over it. Uh, you, you, ha you will have the ability to create your own message types. So, uh, you see, uh, we have image, uh, text, decision buttons, but uh, as I mentioned, you can have a video or a link or uh, in, in Slack you have th those fancy messages. You can have your own fan fancy message type created. So you implement that uh, in your module and it's pluggable and it will work the same way. It will show it up on, on the screen you just saw and, uh, and you can continue one. Um, 
you can create your service. You will have to create your service because it's the way you interact with the chat mechanism. So uh, that's the, the uh, biggest part you are going to implement alongside with the workflow. That's not the next thing. You're going to have to implement those things because uh, every chatbot has a, a, a chat mechanism has its own API. And sometimes it's not. It's some, sometimes it's a standard, a standard one. Sometimes it's not, and uh, and you ended up having to customize that. Uh, we are planning to make it more um, extensible in the sense that uh, the default configuration you don't have to rewrite. But as for this moment, you have to rewrite some part of what we have for the workflows. Um, at a Hopefully you can see this. Uh, this is a, a simple example of what does a chatbot plugin look like. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, you will probably uh, have to implement, as I said, the services and the workflow. It will consume a lot more, co more code. But as for the plugin itself, it's basically uh, this uh, two methods and one class that you write with the uh, appropriate annotation, right? Um, so let's go to another demo. For the guys that are more into code, I will show you some code later on. So, uh, okay, let's see if my Let's see if the, the chatbot will work on the presentation. Hopefully, it will. So, this this chatbot I have, I, I'll go back to Drupal just a second, just to show you. Um, uh, let me go back here first. Chatbot list. So, uh, I'm going to interact with uh, Slack. So, what is the workflow that I'm using? It's this pizza workflow that I created. And uh, if I go back to the uh, workflow list, you see these steps. This is what the chatbot will interact with me when I was in uh, Slack. And uh, hopefully you will see this in action. So let's go back there. And I say hi. And let's see if the chatbot is alive. Oh, right. It's, it worked. So. Um, on my chatbot uh, workflow, I created an image uh, type, so it came with a, an image. This image is being served by Drupal. Uh, I can show you uh, that back later. But uh, and we also have uh, a three. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, two other text messages in this very first step. So let me go back a little bit here. The pizza start step here is composed by these three main items, the image and the two text. Let me go back there and show you uh, the pizza start step. So hopefully it will make sense for you. Okay, uh, you see, uh, I said three, it's, it, says, it says two. Messages here. Uh, you can see two messages. Let me go back a bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 now I see. Uh, there was a, a, a little flicker uh, on the chatbot. But anyway, it's two messages, not three, as I said before. But anyway, uh, so it, it's asking me uh, what kind of interaction do I want, want to do? And this message here. Uh, Hi, welcome to Pizza Planet. How can I help you? This message is also a decision message. Depending on what I uh, send to the chatbot, it will answer me uh, differently. That's why it uh, sent me uh, this to continue. Please inform your uh, option. So if I say, hi, I would like to see your menu. 
Okay, and so it gave me back the uh, options on their menu. These options are also defined in Drupal as three simple, three simple text messages in a, a single step. So I say, oh, okay, I want pepperoni. And, uh, and it answers me back and say, okay, uh, it's 12 uh, and a half. Thank you, it will take 15 minutes to, to uh, prepa prepare it. And so this workflow is done. Uh, if I start it over again and I say hi, it will, uh, oh, it, it sent, uh, it's giving me uh, the operation time because uh, that's one of the things that we are yet to uh, complete on the chatbot module. Uh, for now, you only, you, you, the chatbot module you will go through all the steps in the workflow. And uh, uh, this step specifically, the, the one uh, for the operation time, is another, uh, a different step that uh, I could take uh, on the, uh, on, right on the beginning. So let me start it over and, and ask, what is your opening time? And now you see, uh, it's the same message because it's the same step. Uh, the difference uh, is because uh, the chatbot uh, didn't go uh, uh, to the end uh, of a, flu a flux and stop it there. It continued on until the last message was sent. So that's something that we are yet to improve in this module. But anyway, so this, uh, this step uh, I'm sorry, this uh, flux, this flow is set for chat for uh, Slack. But what if I change, I want to change it uh, to use a different uh, workflow. So I go to my chatbot list and I edit it and instead of, oh, sorry, and instead of using the pizza workflow, I can set it up to use the button workflow. Once it's saved, uh, let me go back here, and I say hi again, and this time it's not giving me the pizza uh, menu uh, workflow, it's giving me the, the buttons workflow. So it's a different workflow working independently, uh, uh, I, I mean, working no matter what uh, chat mechanism you are using. It's, as I said, it's pluggable. So uh, here you can see a different approach. It gives us, us some messages and a, a decision through buttons, not anymore through text. So I can say, oh, I'm feeling good. And it, it will send back the message to the chatbot, and depending on, on what message you choose, it will lead you to a different flow, uh, to a different step. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer, probably the Wi-Fi or something like that. But anyway, you see, uh, you can just change it through the, the interface. But what about Facebook? Well, let's try to Let's try it on Facebook here. Say hi, and let's see if it will work. I'm guessing, I'm experiencing some connect. Oh yeah, that's it. Uh, let me do a, a quick change and do it a tether so I can use my own internet connection. Mm. Do -do -do. Yeah. All right. Let's see if that that will work. Okay. You see, uh, now that we have a connection, it came back uh, with a lot of uh, blabbering. Uh, but anyway. Uh, 
if I choose I feel bad, I, uh, it says, oh, I'm sorry, it, it took a different path. Uh, our Facebook chat is set to use the same uh, flow, uh, flux, so we have, oh, hi there, how are you, uh, how are you feeling? The same, the same, the very same workflow is working here. Uh, if I say hi again, hi, and, uh, it will start spitting some messages. And uh, I can choose whatever I want. And just to demo purposes, let me show you. If I go back to the Facebook and change it to use the very same pizza pizza workflow. Okay. Let's try it again. Let's see if it works. Facebook is kind of quirky. Sometimes it's just say, oh, you're good, but you're not. Okay. So Facebook is giving her, us a hard time. Never mind. Uh, we can we can work on that later. But as you can see, uh, it's pluggable uh, in the sense that you can develop your own chatbot uh, um, module or, or plugin. And it's in the sense that we can just flip for one workflow to a, a chatbot or to another chatbot. Uh, let me go back here. OK, uh, before I go to the, the further improvements, I, I've mentioned some. Uh, I just want to show you, and hopefully it will enter presenter mode. Yeah. Um, workflow. Okay. Uh, that's not a wide room. Yeah, if I if I type the right name, it, it, it will work better. Uh, chatbot Facebook. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can see. Uh, it's too dark. Uh, but anyway, that's the code uh, for the plugin. Uh, so you see, there's. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's this annotation. Uh, it uh, extends for the chatbot plugin interface. Uh, uh, I mean, it imp implements and it extends for the chatbot plugin. And you see some methods that are uh, instantiated here. Uh, those methods are uh, pretty standard. Uh, that's why I choose these two to put on that slide, because they are the ones that really does the trick. Uh, and if you go to chat, uh, Facebook, I'm sorry, Facebook service, as I said, here is where the magic happens. Uh, you have the type of message you can interact with. Uh, and the, the, the way uh, it will answers when the chat mechanism talks to your uh, uh, chatbot, uh, it will know how to give it back the information in the sense that it can talk to the chat mechanism API. So uh, basically it's the implementation of the, the API, but only the part that makes sense for your chat to chat with the, the, the chat bots and your, the chat service. Um, so you can send messages and so on and so forth. Um, as I said, this module is available on Drupal.org. So if you can go now, uh, Drupal, you see you can get the code and see better than in the big screen here. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's, it's there and you can see. So let's go back now to the presentation. Okay, so what are the future improvements that we want to make on this, uh, this module? And the future uh, improvements we want to see for the chatbot as a whole. 
Um, of course, there's room for refactoring on this code. As I said, this, this code was forked from uh, the Facebook module, uh, White House build. Um, but yeah, uh, some things are, we, we improved, some things are the same, and some things changed along the way, and so we have to adapt it, and we have to uh, do this refactoring. Uh, you can, of course, create uh, fancy and many other uh, message types. So these message types are going to be used uh, throughout the other mo throughout the other uh, plugins. So you can uh, think of that as a way to make it better for uh, the user uh, interact and get a rich experience. And uh, of course, there is the integration with the AI mechanisms. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, this uh, presentation is not about AI, but it's inevitable that you probably, uh, uh, inevitable that you, you want some kind of AI behind it, and you will try to implement it. So uh, this is one of the next steps we are looking for to implement. Uh, it's a, uh, some kind of way to interact with these uh, AI APIs. So you can send your, uh, uh, the text the user send to you back to the uh, uh, um, AI API so it can evaluate and come back to a more relevant, just not just a simple workflow, but a more relevant, just like Siri uh, or any kind of uh, uh, way of thinking of that, like Amazon Lex or uh, IBM Watson, mm -hmm. and, and it can give you uh, a better answer. So these are uh, the improvements we are looking for. And uh, I'll add something there as yeah. well. There's a couple other, sorry, there's a couple of other things that we would want to do. One of them is some of these, ch uh, some of the things we have listed here is AI platforms. They really are chatbot platforms. So API.ai. I, I think is a good example of that. It's, we want to take a look at, so we have the idea of a chatbot. We have Drupal, which I think if we're here, we all know is a rich content management framework. And I think some of the th experimentation we want to do as we look f into the future is, does it make sense to necessarily be having a, maybe the intents or the behaviors assessed by the AI platform brought into Drupal married with content and then shared back out to the chat service. And maybe it's worth doing an experiment to see if it makes sense to plug Drupal in as a system integration into some of these chat services so that the message could go from, say, Slack to API.ai. It could go to Drupal then and pick up some content and share it back. So exactly what order these, these three integrated systems uh, integrate in, I think we want to experiment with that as well. We know that Drupal it has the rich content about a lot of the brands that we work with. We just want to know where to plug that into the experience around you know, message evaluation and, and connecting with the, the chat service APIs. Uh, and then another thing that we want to take a look at is you know, if we have customers, if we have consumers and users interacting and they're essentially exhibiting behaviors with the chatbot, how can we take some of those behaviors and push it into a platform like Acquia Lift to be able to better understand who that anonymous consumer is? Uh, maybe taking that a step further, how can we pull some of the segmentation uh, knowledge about the user out of a platform like Acquia Lift and pull it into the chat workflow experience so I can know if you're a returning customer, have you purchased before, are you in the evaluation part of the workflow, of your, of your decision-making workflow. If I can understand better who you are from some of that behavioral segmentation data that we would get out of a tool like Lyft, we can then perhaps uh, curate the chat experience or give you a, a variation on the workflow that's going to speak specifically to where you are uh, in, your user journey, in your user journey or in your customer journey. So those are some other, some other things that we want to experiment with over the course of the year to better understand how we can take all of these different tools from behavior analysis, segmentation, you know, artificial intelligence, natural language processing, along with the content-rich uh, repository that we have in Drupal to pull it together into a unified uh, user or customer experience. Uh, Raphael, before we do questions, did you have something else you wanted to add? Or? No, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, 
uh, the DrupalCon organization just asked us to uh, mention about the the um, Spring code, the code Spring that will run, and also, uh, yeah, um, to the uh, take the survey about the DrupalCon. At a, at a right behind, right below, you can see the, the 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 link. This Google link is a link for this presentation. In case you want it, it's a slider deck. Uh, I will publish it a little bit later after this presentation. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, we are open to questions. If you have any. Can you use the microphone, please? There's. Hi. Ah, thank you for the presentation. Um, I have a question regarding the uh, chatbot module. Uh, is there any way to implement uh, some kind of decision tree? Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, like if you uh, to implement decision tree, like if you have two buttons, like A and B, and then user clicks A, and then there is another two buttons. Uh, D and E, and then if he clicks D, then and yeah. so on. Yeah, you you can pretty much it, do it uh, as as long as the the uh, the uh, the way we created the the steps, you can uh, map any decision to a next step that can be a, another decision, and so you can go deep and deep and deep uh, into these uh, uh, buttons mechanism. If I understand your question, yeah, yeah, you you can do that uh, right now. Oh, cool. And another question is: Is there any uh, capability of submission of web forms or web form integration, like to save what user enters? Mm, I, I don't think so. No, I, I think that's a it's good suggestion though for an improvement would be uh, wh whether some sort of a logging mechanism or some sort of a the ability to then be able to look through some logs and see the not just the customer input, but see what the story was all the way through. Like I think about a chat chat system for maybe contact centers where you can go back and look through the log and see what each party said. So I think that could be an interesting yeah. opportunity oh, for yeah. improvement. Yeah. Uh, 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 right now you can see a history of what the user sent to to the chatbot. We have it logged in a in a an object in a table so it goes on and on and uh, it once it's done it says it uh, it's had a flag saying it's done but yeah we don't see uh, 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 right now we don't have uh, the uh, the chatbot part because it can change so uh, it would be a good suggestion to have also what the, the chatbot said to the user because right now we just have uh, what the user said to the chatbot Got it. Thank you. No problem. Just a uh, just a quick question. Do you have any documentation for it, or is this slide <laughs> the documentation? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much it. No. Yeah. Uh, we are planning to release a documentation, at least for the the, the basic stuff. Uh, the code uh, is almost uh, almost entirely commented with um, at least the, the most important parts. But yeah, it, we definitely plan to to soon release some documentation, uh, how to set up it, it, and it's not far. It's not that hard right now. But we definitely are planning to do that. We we could also, I mean, a, the best way is if there's specific questions, uh, create an issue in the in the issue queue for the module, yeah. and tag it with documentation, and we can answer those specific questions. And honestly, those specific questions, we can take those answers, compile it into a page on on Drupal.org, so that the answers are there for everyone. Yeah. Uh, that that's really awesome. Thank you, guys. And uh, I have quick two questions. So, in regarding missing types. Uh, what do you think about like sending back objects, like for example, like say uh, audio play player objects, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and also uh, web views, like uh, returning back like a simplified web view of your website. So, what do you think about that message type? Yeah, the the, the returning message, the, the message type that you were planning to implement. It's depend on the the chat mechanism you're interacting with. If your mechanism, your chat mechanism, like Slack or Facebook, if they support a specific type uh, of returning message, we can uh, send it 
uh, right now uh, you can create your simple message type and send it back. It depends only on the way the chat mechanisms uh, expect it back. So right now most mechanisms ex uh, has something for a uh, video, for uh, image, for text, for buttons, but many of them uh, doesn't have for audio or anything like that. But since they have that, uh, we, uh, it's as simple as just writing uh, a small uh, message type. I think Facebook, Facebook is going to implement like Apple Music in two or one week. Oh, so, so yeah, uh, as soon as they get that, we can implement that uh, as, as easy as, as that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you're talking about chat boxes, chat bots, okay? Um, on the back end, when we are having a conversation, mm -hmm. mistakes can happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any mechanism that your chat box on the back end is supported by a cognitive system that can automatically do auto corrections? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. And, but and I thought I, you were talking about Watson. Yeah. Okay. And that's the is, is, is that part of the mechanism that uh, Watson will do the cognitive corrections? Correct. That's the reason why we want to look into some of these AI platforms that are specifically designed around analyzing conversation, sentiment, and being able to pull meaning out of what's being sent through by the user so that we can have a, a more reliable way of understanding what the customer is asking for and, and how to respond. Okay, one more question, if you have the time. The three modules that you uh, explained, I think they were um, AI something, bot, and um, Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the three? Uh, Why would I need three? Are there any pluses and minuses? Or any situations where you would say, gee, under these circumstances, you would use Facebook. Under these circumstances, you would use bot. Uh, I, I don't see if I uh, really understand your question. I, I can try to answer. Yeah. So the bot module, as far as we know, uh, really keyly tied into an IRC workflow. Uh, the Facebook Messenger module, once again, uh, the two things that we, because we started with the Facebook Messenger module, the two limitations that we saw there, one, tightly coupled to Facebook, so great if you want a Facebook Messenger bot, really doesn't help you at all if you want to use any other chat service. Uh, the second limitation that we saw was you have to code out the workflow in code. There's no UI that allows you to create the steps and start to tell the story. Wow, okay. Uh, and then the AI ML, uh, Raphael, what was that one? Yeah, uh, uh, the uh, AI ML is just a, a specific tool to work with a specific, uh, uh, it's a specific module to work with a specific tool. Uh, I guess it's called Alice. It's a, uh, an old chatbot. Uh, and it uh, it's just sent back XML files to, to the server, to this chatbot. Uh, so yeah, it's very specific and, and, and nothing related to, to the chatbots we are uh, uh, proposing to, to build here. And all these APIs, they are RESTful? Uh, I'm sorry? APIs, are they RESTful APIs? The, the APIs for? Oh, no, no, they're not RESTful. OK, thank you. We have one or two minutes left. Any other final questions? Great. All right. Well, thank you all once again. Please. Oh, thank you. Please do fill in the uh, the feedback survey. I, I know I. I'll be honest. I seldom do, but really do. Please fill in the this feedback survey because we would like to hear what you have to say and and how we can improve upon this for the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.